Today's Saturday and we have a customer's repair which is a Midland 48XL and it's the early production one which is the PR27 whereas of course later production is the CE Multi and in 2021 as I record this it's still available uh, this is the 48XL and uh, well, it was Kerno who uh, distributed it at the time so that's come with a short power lead, which is fine with a fuse. We've got the mic, and hopefully ours... It's probably a dodgy mic, which is probably why we've got it. But uh, I'm not encouraging mics in this COVID situation. Or they've got to go through the dishwasher. So we'll connect this up to our handy crocodile clips, which I enjoy shorting out. switch on thirteen point eight volts so on RF gain might gain to full channel to something sensible change glasses because I can't see what I'm doing clean back glasses on t-shirt because I still can't see what I'm doing so we're in UK that's what we want It just starts off on channel 9 then, does it? Right, we'll go into picture in picture. And we'll see whether we've got any transmit. Before we do that, we'll plug the system into the aero connector. Is it supposed to be permanently wired in? So it's beyond 3 watts. About 3.2 watts. So we'll find the connector for the speaker on the system, on our system. And we'll put 2779125 into the signal generator. Oh, so that's UK. Right, so the best bet is to get a piece of paper with it being a customer set and write down what we've got right now. Hopefully we've got a piece of useless paper. There we go. So it was, um, we'll, we'll redo this power because we were on CPT last time. 3.2 watts. Let's just look at the deviation. I'm going to have to retune this because we were doing those low band sets last time. Wallow. One, two, one, two, one, two. Wallow. One, two, one, two, wallow. Oh, good grief, it's three. So that's not right. Um, 
and frequency. It's been screwdrivered. Just put this in, see what the frequency is. Um, there we go. That's dropped. Still within specification, but it's, it will pull it up, of course, while it's here. And now we'll look at Sino. So we'll just go over to that. Dowling 12. Ah, why have we gone off? Right, well, we better open it up. And to be honest, I think we better look as to why there's no receive. Because I don't want to waste time going through everything else and for it to be not economically repairable. We don't often see these sets. And to be honest, it's probably two or three years since we last had one. So it's come back, has it? <laughs> it's got no rear screws in. I haven't looked at the customer's, I've looked at the customer's letter, but I've not remembered what the customer put, and I've not got the customer's letter with me, so. I'll let you know when I can get into this thing. Okay, so we've got ingress of moisture along, along the edge, so that's not good. And these aren't plug-in speakers. At least it's a bit bigger than you get these days on CB radios. So we've got some some soldiers. There's quite a lot of re-soldering. Yeah. Right, well, I'll look into this dry joint. Okay, so I've been under that shield plate. Um, and for dry joints, it's clearly had dry joint issues in the VCO. Uh, and it, obviously people have looked at this time and time again and not cured the dry joints. And we may not either. You know, it can be um, it can be very frustrating. But there's multiple dry joints. I'll go through that again and I'll certainly go through it again if it plays up during the time we have it here. So we were getting, uh, 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 trying to get a reading for receive for um, Synad, and we can now give that reading. We can change scales as well. So for 12 decibels Synad, we've got 0 0.78 microvolts. Right, so let's get on with it. Now the microphone's on the floor. I 
I'll go and look if we've got any service notes on this just to save having to uh, go through it. We'll address the frequency first because that is obvious. And we'll just pull that up with the trimmer capacitor CT401. Whoa, it does move quickly, this one. Okay, 79122 is about the best we're going to get. Just turn that volume down a bit. So we've covered that. Uh, deviation. I'll just go and see if I've got any service notes just before we go through. Just uh, going through it willy nilly. So we don't actually have the service manual for this version. And if they're multi, it's for 40. Midland 48. Excel multi so what of of my information is relevant is anybody's guess still got this dry joint i've kept it on two hours and it's packed in again so despite going through it for dry joints and it working on the face of it it doesn't work now so yeah that's relevant 301 302 so we'll do the um we'll do that whilst it's working so it's actually seems to have come up for some reason that's probably the dry joints I've been dealing with so we've got um, that's definitely peak there I'm actually trying to feel that through the screen. You can probably see it through the camera. Let's tilt it up. There we go. And then 310, 311, and 312. which are going to be inside there so we're not touching them are to do with the um, suppression of unwanted spurious emissions so we've got a, about 3.9 watts the service manual for the version I've looked at is a bit ambiguous RV203 is power but is it power or is it power on the meter so we're going to find out One oh one, two oh one, five oh one. Chances are that's going to be the RF meters, so let's have a look. You can hear it going on and off. And it's the V there's no transmit when it's going off, so So 
it's not indicating anything on the meter. But then it's not indicating anything on the meter on receive either. And it may have a duff meter, in which case uh, I'm not sure what we're expected to do there. I mean, that's a very loose terminal. Let's try and get it to work again. day these are now 20 years old so we've got 145 millivolts on that meter on receive and in transmit we're actually over the scale so we have a duff meter Well, I'm not sure I can order one of those for him. Well, anyway, I think I need to carry on looking at the dry joints because... Uh, oh, I've turned it this way up and now it's... But what we've proved, it's not the receiver, it's the VCO. Because when it's going into its silly mode... It isn't transmitting either. So I'll pause the video again. Okay, so I've gone through it again for dry joints and it's working at the moment. So let's sort this deviation out. So that needs to come down from there and it's 201 according to my notes. So we set that to about 2. And then give it the whistle to wallow. That's about where we want to be. So it's a bit too loud, and the trouble then is you, he's going to end up coming through distorted at the other end, unless they're listening on a Fidelity Thousand or some other bleed over box. So we've covered that. We know that's going to be the preset for the meter, but the meter doesn't work. I wonder what this board is. Who thinks it's going to be some kind of... Has it got one of these... Noise killer, that was it, isn't it? It's not North Kastivan, I'm in South Kastivan here. We won't be touching that, of course. ESP. Is that extra sensory power? It gets the spooky things coming through. Okay, so let's see whether we can tune this receiver. It's right on the edge of me being able to pick that up on the synad meter. So we'll just check the detector start we're starting with, and we'll go over to the oscilloscope and an S9 equivalent signal. We'll turn the volume up so I've got a nice waveform and not a nasty waveform. And I want the bigger one of these tools. That was already set spot on. So we'll put it to about 5 decibels on the cyanide meter. Turn the volume down a bit. And we're looking at 101, 103. So we're going down there. That'll be the IF. And I want the original tool that I've now put down. It's gone under the radio. 
So we'll go over to the sign up meter. That's a nice improvement. Let's pop that up a bit to make it read. Yep, that's received done. Not much to that. So let's see what we're getting now on the sign ad. Oh, that's better. So 3.9 watts, 2.2 .2 to 2.5. And 0 0.49 microvolts. So we'll set the squelch. So we'll put S9 equivalent again on the signal generator. Turn the squelch to full. Well, it's still on, so I need to have more sensitivity. Sorry, I need less sensitivity than that, so I'm just going to turn down the signal generator till the squelch comes in. I'll, put, I'll put this on the attenuator control, then you can see what I'm doing. So that's S9 at 100 microvolts. So 30 microvolts, 10 microvolts, the squelch has come in. So we've now got to play guessing games because it doesn't say easily uh, where we are with the squelch. And chances are it's going to be that one. But then it could be that one. Let's see what happens. Oh, I guessed right. So we'll put the signal generator up a peg. And now we'll turn the signal generator up to 100 microvolts. And it isn't coming in. I want it to come in. That's it. That's now exactly where I want it to be. So. A squelch. So 201 is deviation. Uh, squelch is RV103. So we know that's true. So it gives us. So RV101, RV201, are currently unknown, and whatever that is down there. Oh, no, it's not AM capable, is it? So it's an FM only set. I was going to say one could be AM mob, but of course it isn't. Just check this isn't power. It blooming well is. So the radio is capable of four and a half watts. So we'll drop it to four. Not quite see it. the number of the part is just under the um, the metal bit. I think it's RV two o three. So 
so I'm going to put um, bottom right corner that's going to be um, meter I'm sure I'm going to have to see whether we can order a replacement meter for this. And the good news is it is still receiving. You see, you can, you can feel like the, it's not connected to anything in that meter. I don't know what's happened to it, but um, oh, let's see what. Uh, I think they're pretty standard throughout history. Those meters, it's like, just like the one in the Precision series. So we'll go and have a look at what's available, but um, I'm not, I'm not really thinking any anything positive there. Right. So the customer's got back to me. He's not going to bother changing the meter. He's going to use the radio mobile, so the meter will remain non-working. So the back preset there would have been for the meter setup. I've checked with the service manual. And RV101 is S meter. RV201 would be AM mod if AM was fitted, which it isn't. So I don't know why the preset's fitted. So 101. Let's see if I can just show you where that is for the S meter. So 101 is, is that one. So the RF meter was that one. The S meter was that one. Power was that one. Uh, did we say deviation was that one? So uh, there we are. We've done the radio still working. I'll put it back together. And we'll test this for a week um, on and off before sending it back to the customer. I'll not be charging the customer for any work towards dry joints. All he's going to pay for is for the retune and test. I do not enter into contracts with dry joints because there's no guarantee and I don't want to be involved. So there we go. So that's working fine. So I'll put it back together and we'll just uh, see if there's anybody uh, kicking around out there and then we'll do an on the air test. So that's a nice working radio. Okay, so here we are with it on the aerial with our Midland microphone, it didn't come with one. One Nana Roger. No. Right, so there we go, the Midland XL48, uh, which is the early version, which is PR2797, not the multi-version. So we'll do an on-the-air test with that. Thank you for watching.